Niners lost three straight. They're five and three coming off their bye. Taking on the Jags, also coming off their bye. They're six and two. With the longest win streak in the NFL. That's what the, the, you just looking at win streaks this week. I just we already covered that. A Jags or one, two Vikings ago. two. And now That's it's come up. Yeah. Jags won. There's three or four teams tied with two. Dynamite drop in. Thank you. Debo Samuel, likely back here. Same with Trent Williams, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. Um, in this world of on off splits and A B analysis and all that, and yes. is uh we've had a lot of these things with the Niners, right? Because they be, they when Brock Purdy showed up, they became really good and didn't lose. Mm-hmm. But he also showed up right after Christian McCaffrey showed up as well. Right, and Christian McCaffrey had made an an, 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 an impact when Jimmy G was out there. Now we have Debo Samuel gets hurt, and the Niners just fall apart, start losing. And Trent Williams. And Trent Williams. So we've got a lot of these. It's never clean. There's yeah. always two, at least, possible explanations. Or the third option, door number three, where it's both of them at the same time, creates the thing. But either way, they're both back this week. So the 49ers theoretically should be back to where they are and snap the three-game skid. Yeah. Trent Williams officially questionable. He sat out practice, but he's at that point of his career where, you know, he can right. still practice. But he's been back at practice and, yes. you know, looking like he might actually give it a go. So, on one hand, you would say, of course, Brock Purdy has regressed a little bit. The defense is catching the passes that he's throwing to them, and they, they weren't earlier in the season. That's still probably just the answer. But there is something about this Niners team being fully healthy, fully loaded, and that is what makes them very difficult to stop. So, great matchup against a Jags defense that's number four EPA per play allowed against the pass and has been stout against the run as well. Yeah, Jags have had a good defense. Um, I, I think it really the thing to focus on is is those returning players. Do we see the 49ers offense bouncing back to what it's supposed to look like? Because, look, the Cincinnati defense, Cincinnati generally, like the Bengals right now, there honestly might not be a better team in the NFL than the Bengals right at this moment. So it's the one loss the 49ers have had that makes sense, that's excusable. Losing to Minnesota the way they lost makes no sense and isn't excusable. Like the other two games – are the ones to be concerned about from a 49ers perspective um, and the fact that they came back to back like you could the Cleveland one right you can excuse and, and that's an elite defense as well but you can excuse one bad day at the office it happens everyone loses a game pretty much whatever doing it again the next week that's bad and then the third game just makes it look worse because it's three in a row but that was the one that makes the most sense so point being can they actually bounce back now with these guys returning and right the ship and you know make the point that they are theoretically one of the best four teams in the NFL still? Yeah, I mean sometimes that's the that's the fun thing about the NFL. It's like when you when you play a team, right? You know, if you had played the Bengals in the first five weeks, I mean the Titans with Tannehill, who's now been benched, the Titans with Tannehill destroyed the Bengals, right? I mean that just that stuff just just happens at different times of the year. Um, I still love this matchup, though. Um, Kyle Shanahan going up against a really good Jags defense, as we've said. Darius Williams at corner playing really well. Just the secondary in general for the Jags playing really well. The other thing I want to highlight is the Jags linebackers, right? In those, we talk a lot about Shanahan and the stress he puts on the defense and how it's it's mostly directed at linebackers, right? I mean, those are the guys that are uh, that he puts on a string, and you got to play the run, and you got to play the pass, and all that. Um, the linebacker play for Jacksonville has been really good. Uh, Foye Olakun, Devin Lloyd, second-year player, playing extremely well. And if you look at the games that the Niners lost, the teams that beat them, Bengals, the Vikings, the Browns, they got really good performances from their linebackers in those games. So to me, that's the matchup to watch here, what the Jags have done um, at the second level. Because they're not – they're not rushing the passer great. I mean, we've, we've highlighted that a bunch this year, where it's really Josh Allen having an excellent season off the edge for the Jags. They're not getting much pressure elsewhere. So to me, it's that back seven, particularly the, the linebackers and safeties who are going to make the difference here maybe for the Jags. Yeah, I was curious. I just fired up the data now. Um, I love the, yeah, so like the live looking, right? It's like people are, are, are joining us in our game research. We're yeah. doing it live on the air. Uh, linebacker play generally in the NFL is up this year. You know, if you notice the PFF grades, there's a lot more grading well, corresponding with this whole defense resurgence type of thing. And yet, 
typically, as you say, Kyle Shanahan, more than anybody, puts linebackers in an absolute blender and has specifically targeted some of them down the years, et cetera, et cetera. So I was just curious how linebackers are grading this year versus the 49ers. Um, you have JOK with an insane grade of 91 when they played the Browns. Uh, you, then you've got three guys, Jordan Hicks, Christian uh, Roseboom, and Logan Wilson with reasonable grades, and then everybody else still grading pretty badly. Yeah, so that's what I looked up. I actually looked that up last night, and there was every team that had beaten them pretty much had at least one guy that was good there, right? Yeah, and even guys that are pretty good linebackers or having reasonable seasons didn't have good games against the 49ers other than those guys we mentioned. Um, from a Jacksonville perspective, I think it's another game where you say, okay, how, how are they taking this next step as a team? They beat Buffalo back in week five. Um, have, you know, they lost to the Chiefs 17-9 to back in week two. I think if you're, you're an ascending Jags team that you know, is taking the right steps, right? They kind of turned a corner midseason last year, made the playoffs, had a nice run there lost to the Chiefs, who are just a better overall team, and went on to win the Super Bowl. But now the Jags, what, which games are they going to really be tested for the rest of the season? It's this game against the Niners. They have the Bengals in Week 13. I think it's a Thursday night game. They have Baltimore in Week 15. I mean, those are, those, those are the games where the Jags are going to say, okay, are we this, the team that can actually make a Super Bowl run here? Yeah. So 6-2 and two Jacksonville team. This is a huge game, even though it's you know with an NFC team. Just to uh, just to prove their worth. Yeah, it's a big game for them to you know really keep their run going and show that they, you know, after struggling for a few weeks where their receivers weren't making plays for Trevor Lawrence, now everything is actually firing and the team looks good. So it's a big game for them against a legit opposition to show, yeah, we can do it. Um, and then for San Francisco, it's huge because if they lose four in a row. I mean, that's that's bad. Um, the other thing to remember here that's very important. Back in 1999, uh -huh. week one, Niners at Jags. Steve Young versus Mark Brunel. Mark Brunel against Mark Brunel Light. What a matchup. Two lefties. A couple lefties. Don't get that Similar styles. Number eight, the whole thing. Steve Young trying to be the next Mark Brunel. Jags win 41-3. to 41-3? to 41-3. to three. Huh. That was uh, Steve Young went like nine for 25. Got uh, beat up physically and just... Emotionally, probably. <laughs> um, it was a beatdown. In the rain in Jacksonville. Huh. In the rain. In the rain. Maybe Steve couldn't throw in the rain. Yeah. That I mean, it was, the, it was the last year of his career, and he was perhaps concussed during that game. Mm. Dom Capers defense. I wonder if lefties, you know, two lefties playing each other is like in boxing, where southpaws don't like fighting other southpaws because <laughs> it doesn't come up that often. Yeah, I'm sure it's sure it's very much the same thing anyway like mike vick's kryptonite would have been kellen moore had to throw that out there um so the uh the niners are favored by four here in jacksonville the other niners jags game that randomly comes to mind was when jimmy g first got there in 2017 and the jags had that awesome defense that year right they had jalen ramsey they were playing that gus bradley cover three scheme and shanahan went in there and they wrecked the jags defense that year um as shanahan seems to do against uh the pete carroll cover three tree uh, yeah i mean it's no really relation big. to any of these to this actual game this week but it's also i mean it. you just look at the line people aren't riding off the 49ers yet you know three bad losses in a row or yeah. two bad losses and then a loss to make it three losses in a row they're still favored by three against a team that has you know one of the best records in the nfl and has a pretty good resume in terms of being a, a good nfl team so Nobody's jumping ship yet on this 49ers team. If they lose this one, maybe we start to see the line shifting significantly. All right, what do you think, Sam? Niners by three here in Jacksonville. I'm buying into the return of the, the important 49ers players. I think that I'm, makes them win and cover. I'm buying into the 99 Jags. No, I'll take the Jags to cover the three. I think this is a big, uh, big prove-it game for them, for Trevor Lawrence. The defense that's played well. Give me the Jags to cover the three here. Mm-hmm. 